I love the Gospel of Luke because of the stories. And uh, one of the things that's true about the stories in Luke's Gospel is they relate to one another. They're uh, matched sets, which we don't always realize. Uh, one of the things Luke does is sometimes he'll have a story that involves a man and he'll pair it with another story that involves a woman. Like in uh, Luke 15, a shepherd, a man, goes out and finds his lost sheep. And the next story is about a woman who makes every effort to find the lost coin. I think that's what's going on uh, with our story this Sunday. It kind of forms a pair with the story last Sunday about the unjust judge and the widow. So there's a story about a widow. This week we, a woman. This week we have a story about a man. It's also true that Luke's stories are full of surprises and they're meant to be very funny, which you may not always get. Let me go back to the story last week about the widow and the unjust judge. Um, you might want to think of it in terms of a wrestling match. Now, I, I hope I'm not uh, disillusioning you, but professional wrestling is scripted. It's not spontaneous. <laughs> so, uh, if we were scripting that story like a wrestling match, in one corner we'd have the unjust judge, and I would suggest uh, visualizing Dwayne Johnson, The Rock as in the role of the unjust judge. If you don't know who Dwayne Johnson is, he is a wrestler and a football player and an action movie star. He's quite a large man, by which I don't mean that he's fat. He's chock full of steroids. Uh, so uh, when the story goes that he does not fear God or respect human beings, you can practically hear Dwayne Johnson saying, I'm bad, I'm bad, okay. He's in one corner. In the other corner, we have the widow, and I think she should be played by Betty White. <laughs> I assume a lot of you know who Betty White is. She's in her 90s. She's been a, a comedy actress for many, many years. Uh, this makes it really, really funny when the punchline arrives, and it's typical of Luke's surprises that the punchline doesn't come from the widow. The story doesn't end with the widow saying, oh, I'm so glad that I kept going to the judge. Instead, it ends with the judge saying, I'm bad. But I got sick and tired of that widow coming because I was afraid she was going to strike me. It's even more vivid in the Greek. This is Dwayne Johnson. He says, I was really afraid that Betty White was going to come and give me a black eye. That's literally what it means in Greek. Well, get the picture here. Here's Betty White. She climbs up on a stepladder, and she socks Dwayne Johnson. And he's so afraid that this might happen that he finally does the favor that she wants done. The story this week, again, has two opponents. This time, they're both men. In this corner, we have the Pharisee. And I tried to read his lines so that you would get an idea of what he's like. He's not a hypocrite. He's not making this stuff up. He really does some very good things, and boy, does he know it. So uh, he's a tiny bit pompous, so I would suggest that you might want to visual visualize Alec Baldwin in the role of the Pharisee. Not Alec Baldwin, the person. I mean, the characters he tends to play, like Jack Donaghy on 30 Rock, kind of full of himself, uh, very sure of himself, rather pompous. So uh, he's telling God how wonderful he is and uh, notices the, the uh, tax collector out of the corner of his eye and says, I'm so glad I'm not like that loser. I would suggest that uh, in the role of the tax collector, tax collectors are very much hated because, among other things, they're very dishonest and they extort money from people. So I'd suggest we might want to go with the real-life person in the role of the tax collector. I, might, I suggest you might want to visualize Bernie Madoff in the role of the tax collector. If you don't know that name, Bernie Madoff is doing time now. He was some kind of financier, 
And he took a great many people for enormous amount of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, and if you think, well, Bernie Madoff is such a bad guy, this is how people felt about tax collectors. Jesus loves telling stories in which people that you're supposed to hate and despise behave very well, behave in a way you're supposed to learn from. He loved to tell stories about Samaritans. Uh, Jesus and everybody he knew, you hate Samaritans. They are just the worst. They are awful people. You can say any rotten thing you want about a Samaritan and everybody will applaud. When you say Samaritan, people are supposed to boo and hiss. So imagine the shock when Jesus tells a story in which a priest and a Levite don't act well, but who acts well is a Samaritan. Jaws would drop in all of Jesus' listeners when they heard that. Are, are you sure you want to say that? A Samaritan did something nice? Just so in the story this weekend, the tax collector, Bernie Madoff, has the punchline. He's the one who says, I'm really sorry. God have mercy on me. I've done bad. I've, I've done terrible things. Curiously, we're going to have another story next Sunday about a tax collector. His name is Zacchaeus, and he's further along than Bernie. Uh, Zacchaeus has a restitution plan. He's got a plea bargain all worked out, how he's going to sort of uh, pay back the money. But Bernie, this week, he hasn't even gotten that far. But as far as he's gotten, curiously, he again has the punchline. It's not the real holy guy who uh, gets the last word. It's the scumbag. It's the bad guy. It's the tax collector who says, have mercy on me. The, what he, the, the word that's used for mercy here has a nuance that I think could be helpful for us as we ask for mercy, which we do every Sunday. There's one word for mercy, and this is the word that would be used by Lazarus in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. If Lazarus asked the rich man to have mercy, it would go like, look, I've got nothing. I'm a poor guy at your gate. I'm starving. You got way more than you need. You let food drop from the table for your dogs. Could you give me some of what you have? Could you have mercy on me? So that's one kind of mercy. I've got needs, you've got means, help me. But that isn't what Bernie is asking for this week. The word he used means have mercy on me. I've done bad. I have harmed you. I stole your money. I threw it away. Your life savings are gone and it's my fault. Have mercy on me. Forgive me for the wrong I have done. And that's a much stronger sense of asking for mercy. And I think when we ask for mercy, lots of times it's good to remember, yeah, um, this isn't just I could use some help. This is I really need a break. I really need to be cut some slack because I haven't behaved well. I haven't done what I should have. It occurs to me that this might be a good spirit within which to uh, fill out your ballots. Um, I still haven't gotten mine. I think they just put them in the mail the other day. But I think it's a real good thing in, uh, in voting to always be aware that we need a break. And we ought to vote in such a way that it's a help to the many, many people who need mercy in both those senses.